Hello everyone. So this video is about exploratory data analysis. So exploratory data analysis is something you do when someone first gives you a data set and before you do any kind of statistical analysis you should do basically just like look at the data. So we're going to talk about the kind of plots that you might want to do to visualize the data and then some simple uh, summary statistics that you might want to compute um, to tell you some basic things about the structure of your data set. So, you know, there's a, a cliched phrase that a picture is worth a thousand words, um, but that uh, has some truth to it. You can convey in a single plot much more information than you can do by paragraphs of text quite often. This is a famous plot here by uh, the engineer uh, Charles Minard, and it shows Napoleon's invasion of Russia in 1812. And listed on here are six different types of data. So I think they've got the size of the army, their latitude and longitude, their time, their temperature, uh, and so on. You can read all about it on the Wikipedia link in the notes. But it's a, a classic example of a, a kind of beautiful plot that illustrates really clearly um, what happened in just a single picture. So, what would we do when given a new data set? So let's consider that iris data set. Okay, so this is built into R, you just type iris, it'll print it out. So the thing I often do is just type head from iris, then that gives you the first few rows of the table. You can also type str iris and that tells you what each of the columns are so it tells in this case we've got 150 observations so they're cases they're rows of five variables so five columns the first column is a numerical column that's the sepal length next one is also numerical it's equal width and so on the fifth column species it tells us is a factor and it has three levels setosa uh, versicolor and Virginica. Okay. So what plot might we do to look at these data? Well, let's just see what happens if we type pairs. Well, okay. So what plots might we do to look at these data? So one thing we might do is look at a variable of time. So you could do a histogram of, say, just the sepal length. Time tells you how the sepal length tends to vary between four and eight. I forget what the units are here. And you can do that for the other variables too. But let's just look at one variable at a time. How do we look at multiple variables? Well, you can do a scatter plot. So let's do the sepal length and the sepal width. Okay, so that gives us a scatter plot of two variables. But here we've got five variables. How can we look at all five at the same time? There's a nice command built into R called pairs, and this will give us all the pairwise scatter plots. Okay, so this is the result of typing pairs, Iris. So this plot here is the sepal length plotted against the sepal width, and it's the same as this plot up here. Then we've got uh, sepal width against petal length and so on. For the factor, for species, which is a factor, remember, with just three levels, it converted these to numbers one, two, and three for purposes of plotting. So it's not particularly informative. So one thing we can try and do is making the plots a bit more informative. So I'm going to be using the GG plot two library here. And sometimes we'll use an add-on package for it called ggalley. So one thing we can try is the pairs command from uh, ggplot, okay, ggpairs. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so it's very similar to before. We get pairwise scatter plots in the off-diagonals. But now, along the diagonals, we've got histograms for each variable. And in the upper diagonal plots, we've got the correlation between that two variables. So the correlation between sepal length 
and sepal width is minus 0.118. And it also knew that uh, species is a factor, so it's given us box plots with factors. Uh, for each box plots for each of the variables split into their factors. So that's nice. But we can start to add more colour as well. So I've written a command here. I can't pull up, I can't copy it, so let's um, type it. So GG pairs iris. I'm just going to select columns one to four, they're the numerical ones. And I'm just going to use this mapping. Which says, let the colour of each point be given by the species. Sorry, I need it to be mapping equals. Okay, there we go. So now th this plot is really beautiful, I think. We've got in each of the diagonal plots, we have got histograms for each of the four numerical variables. And the histograms have been split by species by the discrete factors. So setosa, all the setosa flowers are given by the red histogram, so there's the sepal length for the setosa flowers. The versicolor is the green one, and virginica is the blue one. Okay, and the same for the other three numerical variables. And we can instantly see here that the petal length for setosa in red here is very different to the petal length for the other two irises. In the bottom diagonal plots, we've got the scatter plots, the pairwise scatter plots. So uh, let's look at this one here. This is sepal width on the x-axis versus petal length on the y-axis. And again, you can really see the separation between the, the three different species of iris. We've got a, a red cluster for all the setosa flowers, a green cluster for all the versicolor flowers, and a blue cluster for all the virginica flowers. And so by adding a bit of colour, we can really see the structure of our data set here. In the upper diagonal plots, we've got the correlations listed. So we've got the total correlation between sepal length and sepal width is minus 0.118, as before. But now we've got um, the correlation between sepal length and sepal width just for the setosa irises. So that is 0 0.074. And similarly, the correlation just for the versicolor is 0 0.536. So an interesting thing to note here is that in several cases, here, here, and here, we've got a negative correlation between two of the variables when we ignore the species, when we ignore the discrete factor, the label, if you like. But when we break the data down into a species at a time, we've got a positive, a strong positive correlation. So if we'd not done these simple plots, we'd have missed this structure potentially. Okay, so there's real value in doing this kind of plot before you do any form of statistical analysis. So there's various plots you can do, and I've given some links in here um, for an introduction to ggplot2 and a plot galleries. So what I tend to do when I want to do a plot is I go to one of these galleries, oops, see if that works, yep. and I flick through to find the types of plot that I want, okay, and I just copy the code over. That's simple. I, I can never remember how to do plots in ggplot, and so I just find an example and modify it to mine. So let's look at one final plot, and this is the parallel lines plot. So can I copy that? Oh, there we go. So I've, it's a parallel coordinates plot. Okay, I said it again, I just want columns one to four, and I want to group it by column five, which is the species. So let's see what happens when we do that. There we go. So here we've got four different variables, so four dimensional data. And for each flower, there's just a line joining uh, the variables across that flower. And then they're coloured by the species. So let's take this top line. This the longest sepal length. Okay. We can see it's for a virginica type of iris. If we follow it down, we get the sepal width for that flower. 
across the sepal length of that flower, across the petal width. And you can really see how the different variables relate to each other. And the colour helps us see how the species differ to each other. So generally, you'll want to try a variety of plots whenever you get given a new data set. And you'll want to pick out um, the plots that are most informative, uh, most tell the story that you want to tell whenever you write a report. OK, so I've given you some computer exercises to have a go at. So just play around, see if you can reproduce these plots, produce other plots, look through the plot galleries and see if you can create better plots. As well as doing visualisation of your data, it's often useful to also compute a small number of numerical summaries of the data. So in univariate statistics, you're used to dealing with things like the sample mean, x-bar, and the sample variance, which often gets called SXX, and so on. We define analogous quantities for multivariate data. So let's suppose we've got data which is a bunch of vectors, x1, x2, up to xn, and that these are all in Rp. And the sample mean is exactly what you'd expect it to be. So it's x bar, which is also a vector in Rp, and it's just 1 over n, sum from i equals 1 up to n of x i. Okay, and as I say, this is also a vector in whatever space your data points are in, so in the RP in this case. The sample variance is no longer just a single number. You've got p variables, and they may all be correlated with each other. So the sample variance is really a sample variance matrix. We sometimes call it the sample covariance matrix. So we usually call this S, and this is 1 over n, the sum of xi minus x bar times by xi minus x bar. Exposed. So if you think about what the sample variance was before SSX, I didn't write it in, but this was just um, 1 over n, the sum of xi minus x bar all squared, when xi is just scalars. We've got the same thing here, but now we've got vectors of length p, and so we have to do some sort of vector product here. So we've got the outer product here. So this is going to be a P by P matrix. And one thing to note is that the IJ entry of S is the sample covariance between variable I and J. The other thing we need to know is that S is a symmetric matrix which is obvious from the definition that if you transpose this sum up here, um, if you think about what is the transpose of x, y transposed, well, they swap order, so you get y transpose, transposed, x transposed. Okay, so transposing x makes no difference, s makes no difference. s is a symmetric matrix. And the only other thing we need to note is that sometimes, instead of dividing by n here, sometimes you might divide by n minus 1 instead. And that's for a reason of correcting the bias. Okay, but we'll talk about that more later. The other thing we need to talk about is the sample correlation between variables. So the correlation between variable i and j is just the covariance between variables i and j divided by the square root 
are the products of their variances. So the variance of variable i is s i i, and the variance of variable j is s j j. So in matrix form, if we let d be the diagonal matrix, that's the square root of these uh, variances, zero off diagonals, then the correlation matrix R can be computed by D inverse S, D inverse. So as we say, plots are often the most useful way of visualizing data and understanding the structure of data set, but it can be useful as well to compute the covariance matrix and to plot the covariance matrix, which we'll see at some point.